Lee. The field is set for the Lexus Melbourne Cup. Ready to run. Stand by for a start. Gates crash, and they're racing in the Melbourne Cup. What a ride! What a win! In a cup we'll never forget! Has won it from Tiger Moth and Prince of Aaron third. The fourth photo's the chosen one, Persan, from Very Elegant. And behind them, Sir Dragon A, Russian Camelot Ash Run, Finch and Ocean X. Behind them, Miami Bound Warning, Bow and Declare. Back in the field then, Edda James, with Master of Reality, Surprise Baby, Steel Prince of Villiers. Hello and welcome to the Supercoach Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Savage, the jockey of Sav Stable. I'm here joined by Jake, the jockey of, I don't even know your team. Well, 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 it's kind of a stable. You're a stable owner. So my uh, my um, stable name is Bet Bottom Waller. Um, you know, a bit, bit of a pun. I don't know too many uh, racing terms and, and um, I guess owners. So I knew I knew uh, CJ Waller, so I've uh, named my team after him. CJ Waller is a very good trainer. Um, uh, I just know wh- when he's in the race, he's always a chance. So um, we're here to talk about Supercoach Racing, and it's been it, it is a very different uh, form of Supercoach for those who listen and listen for the BBL and the NRL. Um, it, it is very complex to get around, so we're here just to explain how things are, um, throw around horse names and just get a general tactic of things and, yeah, just pretty much get you your basic side and, uh, honestly, our advice isn't going to win you this, but it's going to get you a fair way. You've done it over the cu- past couple of years, Jake, and you've done quite well, um, I remember. Yeah, I mean... I'm not much of a horse gambling man. I, I don't really follow it except for this. I jumped on a couple of years ago and I guess looking at it just from a stat point of view and getting it kind of look at a few tips from the, I guess the experts that they call them. And, and it, it sort of, it sort of uh, works quite well. I mean, uh, somehow I've gone all right over the last couple of years and hopefully this one, uh, I'll go even better. Well, at least better than my an hour all super coach season. That's for sure. I think the exciting thing about this is not as many people play, so it feels like you're probably doing a lot better than you actually are compared to NRL Supercoach. Yeah, because with NRL Supercoach, what we had 150, I think about 30,000 sort of do it. Um, you kind of half that to the teams, like the stables that actually do it every week. So, yeah, you, you see your ranking, you're like, oh, wow, I'm going so good. But then you compare it to, I guess, what the equivalent would be in Supercoach, and you're like, oh, maybe not doing that too. <laughs> yeah, well, well, in this, I think there's only what? 10,000 people that usually play or, or something like that? Uh, last year there was 30,000. 30, that's pretty like, cool. I, like I said, you kind of half it to, to the ones that kind of are playing every single week. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot more than I thought to begin with. So if you're actually thinking about it and looking at the races, looking at the maps and making decent decisions, you're actually going to rank pretty well. So um, if you're going to do any comps or anything, uh, just make sure you... Uh, follow the advice and just just keep at it week to week. So we're going to start here with the group one, group two, group three racing, uh, the point scoring system. So the whole point of this is to get horses and score the most you can. Obviously, there's a captain. You can get double points for your captain. Um, but there's different groups of racing. So I got caught out on this last year where I chose – a couple of winners and I was like, how good's this? But I was getting less points than other people who weren't winning. This is because the group rate, the groups and uh, what sort of listing they're in uh, determines their points. So there is all different categories, which is group one, group two, group three, and listed slash handicap. Group one is the pick of the crop. They're the expensive horses you'll be looking at. So Jake with group one, it's 40 points for a win, 32 points for second. Um, whereas group two is 32 points for a win. So you're obviously looking to get premium points by a group one win. What sort of horses are you looking at when looking at group one horses? Oh, I guess with every race, what I sort of do is I go through, I'll look at the uh, group ones, I'll look at all the fields, I'll, I'll go, you know, you can look at sports, bet, all your betting apps will sort of have um, the form of the form of all these horses and I guess 
uh, they usually have a prediction of what they think, um, some yeah. tips. On it. So I, I go and look at those and you go through the group ones first. Um, you, you know, have, look at the favorites. Uh, for example, you, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pick one. It's the flat Flemington race. Um, seven, I think it is, um, where you got very elegant and incentivized. So they're the two favorites in this race. Very elegant. He's 500 K, uh, because you know, last is being one of the best horses. So he's, or she is, um, always you know based off last year's you know races so it's yeah top five. where incentivize has only been a kind of a recent horse um and that's only 200k but they're both you know valued at the same same i guess odds so if you're going to pick one you'd probably go with incentivize um because it's 200k but i guess majority of these races are going to have the more expensive horses in them um apart from some, you know you you group uh two races where there might be three-year-olds or two-year-olds only where they're relatively new horses so they're going to come in cheap so it's it, i guess you can't really target um the most expensive ones because there is value in these group ones group two races for ones that are i guess more expensive so you've got to do quite a bit of research especially because there is so many horses where you know in the nrl there's so much advice out there i guess and so many like fewer players that you can pick from where this one, you, you do kind of you've got to do a bit more study than a say NRL. I've already, honestly, like oh, I've just drafted a basic team at the moment and I've probably done more study than I did in NRL for the whole season. Um, I went through all the races and just had a look at kind of all the favorites and then you kind of search the horse, see what their price is. And then I think that's a nice way to start off um, by going race to race, seeing how much the favorites are in Supercoach. And if you can find a bargain there, go for it. So incentivize is in my team, 200,000 and he's at $2.80 on sports bet at the moment. Whereas very elegant is $2.25 horse racing is, um, I, I mean, uh, you don't gamble and there's probably a reason for that because nothing is ever a sure thing. So I guess things like this incentivize is probably just as valuable as ha- having a very elegant in your side. In your and, side. You sort of, and you sort of said that like nothing, nothing's like a guess a given with horse racing. And that's why I guess targeting the races where they aren't so open, where there's, you know, two certain favorites or there's only say eight or 10 in the race rather than backing, backing a horse that's, you know, in a very open field, although it may be a group one, but if it's an open field, like one of the examples would be uh, Flemington, I think race six. Um, and also there's a few of the, um, I think the flight stakes maybe, no, not, uh, the Metro, the Metro, very open fields um, where anyone I guess can win, where your horse, you know, you might be back in a favor, but there's a very good chance he can run eighth and not score you very many points. So you've got to kind of got to go minimize your risk in this, I guess, a lot. Um, to sort of make sure you're getting a better chance of getting more points, if that makes sense. It does make sense. So pretty much in a group one race, um, you can go down to your horse can run as low as six or seventh and you'll still get uh, pretty good points, uh, 12, 10 points. Um, it goes all the way down to 10th where you get four points. Um, so really, if you're choosing someone from a group three or a listed, you want to make sure they are a sure thing. So there, there's where you will kind of get your value with the listed races. So in race two in Flemington, that's a listed race. And the favorite is Gunstock, who is at $75,000. I was absolutely... I, I was so excited when I saw this because I thought it was actually a group two race. And Jake updated me before this that the the listings changed throughout the week um because earlier well, in the, on well, super- not, not that it changes it's just that it's kind of in super coach it's updated it's, yeah. it's a bit behind in that and i thought oh, i was on to an absolute bargain but it is a listed race but the fact that he is a favorite he's at seventy five thousand. you can only you only play seven uh of your eight um, okay, so just sort of a bit about sort of what you're choosing here. So you choose eight horses, um, and you don't have to select. I get well seven score. So your highest seven will score. Your lowest eight, your eighth scoring horse will fall out. So you don't have to pick one um, and then get caught out. Like oh no, I got this guy on my bench who scored 
you know, more than whatever. It cho- it automatically chooses your top seven. And you also throw in a jockey in there as well. But I think we'll get to the jockeys sort of afterwards. But, yeah, so you choose eight. Um, pr- in previous seasons, you chose seven and you already had like an AE. You- you'd set your AE up. Yeah. So a majority of the time, people just choose a, a bottom dollar 50K horse where this year you kind of – you kind of want to go with someone that's a bit more pricey and has a potential to score a decent amount of points rather than just, you know, putting a 50K horse that's going to run last anyway. Um, So there's a bit more, I guess, tactics in there that perhaps, you know, you want to actually pick eight decent horses rather than seven and hope that they go better than your stinker that runs last. And this is why we had you on the podcast because you're all around it. You have every idea of what aspect to go. Um, so with the group one races, if your horse comes first, um, it'll go up 50,000. Uh, the maximum is 500,000, Jake. That's right? Yeah, correct. Um, and if it comes second, it'll go up 25,000. Second last is minus 25,000 and last is 50,000. So there is risk in possibly going a bad horse if you're looking at making money with, say, a mid-range group two or, or, or whatever group, a mid-range priced horse yeah and that's something to sort of get across to the to the listeners that these prices change and what you want to do is you want to sort of like nrl supercoach you want to maximize your cap i guess as fast as possible um so you want to be trying to back winners early um no matter what sort of race they are to mac to i guess maximize your cap to use later on to get more of these bigger horses because when it comes down to uh, the melbourne cup it, i think it's only a one a one day meet and you kind of you have to sort of have a lot of cap to afford all the ones that are racing on that day. So um, you, although you get to trade, uh, you get unlimited trades every single week, you want to be make, like maximizing your, um, I guess, your, your increase in your, in your stable value as much as possible. So with the most expensive horse in the game, in the stables, uh, very elegant, he is... No, by by no means a certainty. Is he a risk to start with in round one because he can't maximize his money? He can only lose well, money. Well, well, no. I mean, it not that because you want points as well. And I mean, very elegant. What's he at at the moment? He's at seventeen percent ownership. Uh, we're incentivized at thirty two. So they're racing against each other, and they ideally should finish one two. I mean, there's there's a chance as usual to for a smoky to to um, come in there but those two I guess very elegant you you want the points you want the 40 points as well and very elegant there's a good chance he gets 40 or 32 points so you want those points when it's guaranteed just just like you know Tommy Turbo you you I guess backing someone that's going to get you points regardless yeah. so I think look he's very pricey and um at a I guess a salary that He's quite low to begin with. Um, if you can't fit him in, then I guess I think it's a bit of a risk not going him or her. I don't know why I keep calling him. Call <laughs> him. Um, I, I've got I've got a very elegant in my stable at the moment because I think it's a tough one to pass up on. In where there's a lot of Group Ones this uh, this Saturday that could go like either way, like they're very open fields. Where I think this race um, is, I think, a two horse race. So I think it's very dangerous not having – you definitely – I think everyone's going to have incentivized, but not having someone like Very Elegant um, I think could be a bit dangerous. See, at the moment, I've gone without him um, mainly because I feel like it, I just need to spread my cap elsewhere. Like it, it is very hard at okay, the moment. Here's a thing for you. Will you start with Tommy Turbo next year? <laughs> uh, don't, don't, answer, don't answer the question. We'll, 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 we'll talk about Supercoach Racing, but that's that's a, a bit of a same-same sort of comparison. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess let's move on and we'll, we'll talk some um, some horses and then we'll yep. talk some um, some jockeys. So let's move on. Oh, Payment tries to break their hearts. Tiger Moth wearing him down with the chosen one. It's Twilight Payment. Tiger Moth still trying to get there. Twilight Payment. What a ride, what a win in a cup we'll never forget. Just won it from Tiger Moth and Prince of Aaron third for fourth photos, the chosen one, Persan, from Very Elegant and behind them, Sir Braganay. Nice little um, grudge. Yeah, that was last year's yeah. Melbourne Cup, wasn't it? Yeah, that was last year's. I, I um, won that one. Uh, I actually 
pick Twilight Payment quite early, so I'm quite happy with that. I, I put on another two as well, but I was pretty happy. That was the one I was confident with. Nice. Um, so this is presented by Top Sport. Um, if you want to join Top Sport and punt on the horses this weekend, use the code SC Experience over 18, gamble responsibly. Use the code and they'll take good care of you. Um, I'm not expecting many people to sign up through this because um, I'm not sure how many listeners we're going to get, but if you sign up, it'll be much appreciated and they're, they're a really good bookie. Let's um, talk horses. So yeah. um, let's start with the group one races. Um, it, it's actually, there's so much screens I've got up at the moment. So group one race, let's start with the first one in... Let's start with the first one at Randwick, which is race yep. seven at Randwick. Yep. And uh, ju- just to note quickly here, um, I also got caught out with this earlier. Uh, some horses haven't been added into Supercoach. So if you're looking at certain races and you really want a certain horse, um, maybe just wait a couple of days. Yeah, just wait a couple of days. Like all the all of them will be in there by Friday uh, just because there's so many horses and like just to add them, they got to go through a bit. So... Every horse will be added by uh, Saturday, so just um, just wait for it and make sure you, I guess, redoing your stable maybe Friday night or even Saturday morning because um, there might be a few late scratchings as well that you might want to um, fix up on. 100%. So this is the race we're talking about anyway. Very elegant incentivize. Um, I guess we don't need to touch on that more. You, you're pretty adamant that uh, one of them two are going to finish in the top two. Obviously, yeah. not a given, but uh, they're the two that a lot of people will be on. Uh, the next uh, group one is the race after that, race eight. And the favorite is Grand Promenade at $5.50. So this is quite no uh, Just Just to jump in, Savs, you're uh, you're looking at Flemington at the moment, mate. Am I? Randwick's the uh, group. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But, but, but he was right. The race seven is a group one. Um, and we've talked a bit about all that. But we'll move to, I guess, Randwick, race seven to nine. Randwick, They're all group no, ones. Randwick, we, we, sorry, Randwick, race, race seven is a group one. So yep. um, th- this is not the, um, the the very elegant race. That's a Fleming. No. So. And, it, and all these all these ones are quite open as well. So there comes a bit of risk with these. Um, so make sure you... I guess doing a bit of study, uh, maybe listening to us, but what do we know? Um, <laughs> no, but, not but much. Yeah, I, and like like all the horses, mate, going with your gut works. A hundred percent. So um, race seven for Ramwick Group One, uh, the favourite Star Star Tanties is actually not in Supercoach at the moment. So yeah. there's not much we can really <laughs> really touch on here. Uh, does this mean that? Let's have a look. Hinged looks like a decent horse. He is in there. One hundred seventy five thousand. Twenty-seven dollars um, for the win. Um, let's go to the second favorite, which is four moves ahead. The jockey uh, Nash Roylia. Roylia. Um, I actually have four moves ahead in in my thing, and I, I know, like Sav sort of mentioned, Star Tanti is not in there, so we don't really know what price is going to come in at. It won't be bottom dollar. The thing is, all these horses aren't when they come in, they aren't going to be bottom dollar. They're kind of based on their form. Um, their age affects it a lot, so don't really know. He's probably going to be around the 200k mark. This star tanties in his favourite, but I've got four, four moves ahead. Yep. Um, in my stable, so that's the only one from this race that I have. Yep. Um, but as I said, um, all these Randwick race ones, they're pretty open, so it could go either way. There's a bit of risk uh, versus reward in these races. So four moves ahead. Uh, this horse is at five dollars, and it's a Group One race. He four moves ahead is two hundred thousand dollars. I think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty good purchase to have in your stable at the moment. If you think that he he can land in the top three, yeah, definitely. And there's a few other horses in there like Mallory, uh, Swift Witness. Um, I sort of did a bit of study, and these all kind of raced each other over the last month or so, um, and they were all pretty close. So I think any of those sort of horses and Star Tanties, um as well. I think that that. I, I don't know. I remember seeing that it stormed home in the um, T Rose or whatever race it was in, mm-hmm. um, and it looked all right. So, I mean, like we said, it could go either way. But at two hundred k for a potentially a top four horse in a Group One, um, and that I, I've you know a few expert tips have said that four moves ahead's the favourite 
I guess, in this one, um, in their opinion. So, yeah, for me, I've, I've chucked it in there. And I think Savs is probably waiting for Star Tantis to um, become available and he's probably going to throw him in there. Oh, no, I, th- I think I like the look of four moves ahead at the moment. Uh, the favourite, he, he is a favourite, but at 370 Star Tantis. So, um, I think these sort of races don't always look at the favourite because there's – I find that the $5 to, to $10 – kind of horse always comes through um with the win there um but it also depends on their form if they've come eighth and ninth in the last two runs uh you don't you don't want to jump on them because you want to see something from them first um I, I always tend to look at the trainers and the jockeys um if it's someone i trust like a cj waller a glenn boss a rachel king gay waterhouse uh, uh karen mcavoy uh, James McDonald, Sam Clipperton, uh, just all, all the all the regular suspects. I, I look at them and then I look at their form. So if in the last three weeks, they've come second, fir- a first and third. That's good, good enough for me and I, I'm happy to jump on. Whereas if someone has come fourth and fifth in the last few weeks, um, I'm pretty keen just to hang on and have a look. Yeah, fair enough on that, mate. Uh, so, I, think, I think that's all about thinking as well. Yeah. <laughs> all of us who don't pump much. Well, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't actually punt heaps, but um, but with the horses, I'm quite new. I, I don't punt heaps on the horses. I'm quite new with the horses, but this method is seemed to be okay. Um, the next race, uh, race eight, the favorite is Ride Dini. Um, yeah. But this one, this is a very, this is a very open race. Um, yeah. Like you've got Mawanga, who is actually quite heavily owned, but I don't think a lot of people have kind of edited their stables because there's a lot of, like if you look down in the most owned percentage-wise, there's a lot of horses there that aren't actually racing this weekend. So I think they've kind of just thrown their stable together based on horses people know. So that all these percentages will change, but um, Mawanga is pretty heavily owned already. So I think that will only go up. Um, but yeah, he's in he's in a very tough race. Like He's got Ice Bath, um, Cascadian even at $21.00. Um, Hungry Heart. He, if you played like the last few years, Hungry Heart was was a gun. He was a cheapy yep. sort of uh, horse, and he was in sort of in E ones. But yeah, the favourite um, Ryadini as well. Like is like it's a, it's a dangerous race to sort of pick horses from um, yep. because, like we said earlier, they could win. If you're sure they're going to win, look back them. But if there's a you know a, a one you know seven horses, there a good chance. Probably try and target maybe a different race. Yeah, this race is awfully hard, and I feel like all the group ones will be similar. Um, that I guess that's why incentivize and very elegant are really good options because yeah. it seems clear that they're the two standouts. Like Reloaded, he's a gun of the past. A tissue is also a gun, and they're at seven fifty. Uh, sorry, twenty six dollars and uh, nineteen dollars. So it's a very open race. I'd probably stay away from this one, um, but. Uh, if there's value there to be made, um, definitely have a look into it. So um, in your stable, do you have any from this race, Sabs? No, I don't. No? Okay. Fair I, enough. I do not. Uh, I've I've got – let me have a look. The, I've only got a draft at the moment. I have one group one <laughs> race, oh. which is incentivized, and then I have four group two races. So I, I think I might have to change my tactics there, but with the group two races, I found that – the people I've got in are much more. Uh, they look more likely to win. Yeah, yeah, they look more of a standout to me. So I think that's the way I've gone, and I've got a race. Uh, sorry, Group Three racer in there as well, and then the last two are listed. Um, but I've still got seventy five k in the bank, so I'm just going to wait until these uh, horses are added into Supercoach, and then I probably will revise it on Friday. Yeah, for sure. So we're moving on to what, race nine again. Is this another the, is this another the, open group? Last group one last um, group. of the two meets. So um, I guess the the races are over two um, locations. So it's Flemington and Ramwick. Um, or all, all, you, you might have a horse on there that might be racing somewhere else, but it's not going to be scoring. So th- they're only scoring on Flemington and. Um, Ramwick, and you'll know if they're racing because they'll have like the, I guess, a, a green group one, two, three, all, all listed next to their name. 
Yeah. Um, so that's how you you look and see if this horse is racing this weekend. I can pick this one. Um, but on to Group Nine again, uh, race nine. Sorry, at Randwick, another open race. Um, so it's a bit dangerous to sort of pick. But there's kind of a few. Uh, Montefiore, yeah, he was the highest scoring horse last year. Um, I've actually got him this year. He looks all right in this this one. Um, and Tente is another. All right, pick, and so is she's ideal. So, although it's a quite a big field, how many got in there? 20, no, 18? 18 horses in the race. So, it's a big field, but um, I'm confident Montefiore you can finish pretty well in this one. Uh, Harpo Marks is also uh, someone who's been in good form as well. Um, he's been, yeah, it's a really good race. It, obviously, Spring Carnival brings out the best races, and um, they, these are horses who have performed really well in the last couple of months. Um, but this is a mad step up uh, to group one, obviously. Um, so you've named off a couple of horses there. There's only one group one race at Flemington. Yeah. And then we've, we've already gone over that one. We, we know the two in there. I don't, I don't think you really want to target anyone else um, unless you want to stack your stable with that one. Cause there's only 10 in the race. Yep. So you can kind of throw in a, a cool it, um, or Sir Dragon Ava, I think he's a bit expensive. I think both of them would be expensive to be sort of stacking your stable in, in potentially going one, two, three, where you can throw another horse in there that's cheaper. And um, although bigger field, but, you know, you're potentially, you know, getting more points from your stable um, as a whole. So I'm guessing that the tactic I've gone with this week doesn't seem so bad considering all the, the fields are very open and, um, yeah, stacking up with uh, Group 2 races is maybe not a bad tactic this week. What do you reckon? No, not at all. I've got a few Group 2s as well. I don't have actually any that are lower than a Group 2. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there is a lot of races this weekend, so you can kind of stay away from, say, the 3s or the listed. Um, yeah. There's probably enough decent picks in the Group 1s and 2s and maybe some certainties in the Group 3s that you can kind of – um, fill your stable with. Okay. With Supercoach Racing, is there a way to look at the races and pick horses based on team oh, team lists in the races? Like that would, <sighs> that would be an awesome feature. Uh, no. No, not really. You, you've, got to, you've got to go through, um, like I use a race net to sort of go through the fields and see what's happening. Um, yep. You can use, but it, like I said, any of your... Um, bookie sort of stuff will be but there's nothing that i guess you can't do it from the app so you have to like you were doing you have to find the horses search them up see how much they cost and then decide whether yep i'm going that one or not yep. or, or moving on so yeah like like we said there's a bit of working out to do but so what other horses do you sort of have um in these group twos um, so you're looking at group two um my most expensive horse is Think It Over. Uh, he's a group two. He is racing in race five at race five somewhere. Ramwick. Yeah, Ramwick. So let's yeah. have a look at that. Yeah, he's he's the heavy favourite in this one and and it's a good chance at winning. Uh what yeah. he's quite pricey though, isn't he? He's four hundred and fifty thousand, so I think that's a lot to spend on a group two. But it's only eight points different for the win, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay to take that type of risk. Um, there, there's only three, six. There's only seven on the field as well. Whereas all these other Group One races have over fifteen horses in the race, so I feel much more confident about having someone like Think It Over in my stable. Yeah. Um, it, do, do you feel like that's a tactic to? That's something to, to considerate the horses on the field. Obviously. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, you if you've got a smaller field, um, although I think if you finish sort of like back half, you don't score points. But I mean, if you're backing a two dollar favorite in a horse, you know, in a field of seven, um, although it is Group Two, there's a good chance he's scoring either the top or, or you know, very well. The only reason I don't have think it over, I mean, I was I would have picked it for sure, being at two dollars, yeah. um, was that I prefer to have very elegant in my field. Yep. Um, I guess very elegant. Even if he finishes second, he scores the same amount as thinking over finishing first. Um, that was the only reason I guess I put there. But I actually have someone else that's in this race that isn't thinking over. I have um, Juasis, Ju- 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 uh, however you pronounce that. He's only 200K. Um, 
and I guess I looked at all the the expert tips, and he was heavily favoured in all of those. So I've kind of thrown him in there um, in this race, and I guess because there's only seven in there, there's a good chance he's scoring quite well. And he opened at nine dollars, and he's already there at five dollars um, today. Uh, I also have a three hundred thousand away game race four at Flemington, and he is equal favourite with Zutori. The field is a bit bigger here. There yeah, is... it's also quite a. Well, it's not much. It's, there's not you know, that many quite, horses in there, but it's a pretty stacked field. Yep. Um, there um, are there are a couple of horses uh, that are over, say. $18, uh, there's 27 31 and $18, and then the rest are between $3.60 and $12. So it's pretty tight in the top sort of eight or oh, seven horses there. Yeah, and you've got, yeah, Zatori, Splintex, Campbell Passer, away game, you know, all good chances at winning this. So it's probably going to be between those four, um, and hopefully for you, Saf's away game gets the dub. <laughs> um, grand... Promenade, uh, Flemington Race 8. Flem Race 8. Oh, the Bart Cummings. Yes. Oh, Jesus. There's a yeah, lot. Yeah, mate. There's he's he, he's going to be changing. He's about to be changing this pick, by the way. Sorry? I think you'll be changing this pick. This is a stacked field. It, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, why the hell did I do this? Yeah. Um, so I think that'll be moved. Um Ingratating. Um, yep, I've got him as well. Flemington race five. Yep, I, I do like this pick as well. Savs, I've got him in there as well. Um, favorite, um, and you know, backed by all the experts. Um, so yeah, I've thrown him in there quite cheap as well. And here is my favorite one right here. Um, I'm just about to get it up. Elusive Express. I also have this one, Sav. Yeah, 125000 and he is $2.90 favorite. The field is pretty big, but uh, the, you could say that there's a lot of horses that probably aren't a great chance of winning. Um, the, I think he's only got a couple that he's up against, but then the next highest odds is is there's not a $9 one and there's a $7.50 one. So uh, going off the experts, pretty good chance and a good jockey and good trainer. Yeah, definitely. Um, he was kind of one of my first picked at, at such a low price, one twenty five k. He's, I think he's going to be in most stables as well. Um, and one, I just want to not in this race, in a separate race. Um, I think it's race two at Ramwick. Yep. Um, it's a it's a maiden race, so they haven't raced yet. Um, so all these, I think a lot of these horses won't be be in the uh like to be selected yet. Yep. Um, so they'll come in either tomorrow or uh Friday, but they're all going to be cheap. And this is a group three race, and there's a heavy favorite. He's a two dollar favorite, Cool and Gutter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he, when he comes in the game, he'll be hopefully fifty k. Um, I've already got a placeholder in there for him. Hopefully he's fifty k. He might come in a bit cheaper because he's so heavily touted as a as a um, you know good racing horse. He's got J Mac on it. Yep. Um, so I think he's going to be one that all people will probably have in their stable. Yeah, um, or most people. I don't um, know. Um, like- I don't like any other horses in this race either. There's um. Well, you don't know. That's the problem because they haven't raced before. So yeah. there's that race. There's a real race two and three are both maiden races. So although they could go either way, because you don't really know how good a horse is until it you know has a few races. So they could go either way. Uh, race two is that's open as, so I wouldn't be touching that. Um, about race three, sorry, but race two, Cool and Garda, I think that would be in pretty much everyone's stable when it uh, is added to Supercoach. Awesome. So we've got, um, uh, I've looked at the Supercoach article today and these are the must-haves that they say. I just want to hear your thoughts on them. Uh, Ryan Dini, 275,000. Uh, trainer is Gay Wardhouse, Adrian Bott. Uh, race number one, by the look of it. Um, what do you reckon? No, Ryan Dini, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's race one. I, know, I think it's I in one of the group ones that's... Um... Group one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite an open yeah. race in that one. We kind of went with that, but there was a lot of other horses that I I probably think beat it. Yeah. Because it's a bit of an unknown, this Ryan Dini. So I think, I mean, sure, if, if the experts are saying that this is a guaranteed win, then then throw it in there. But I'm trying to stay away from the, the ifs in, in that yeah. field. It's a group one, though. 275,000. Yeah. It's probably... You're probably better off having that than, uh, say, a away game who's in an open-type field. 
Uh, yeah, and, and you're also saving a bit of money grand, as well. Sorry, grand prom, Promenade. Yes. Um, yep. so, so that's an easy swap. That's 275 for 275. So uh, I think that's an easy swap for me. Uh, their next one is She's Ideal at 375,000. Uh, the Metropolitan Group One. Again, another stacked field. She's Ideal. It's got a, like a bunch of other. Ho- I think we, we did mention it before that it's in with a. I think another two or three that are a good chance. So just like um, Rydini, it's it's a do you want to take the risk on such a close possible race between, you know, four or five horses? I agree. Um, I guess um, trainers. Oh, sorry, jockeys. Jockeys, what, yes. What, what is your approach on jockeys? I know last year I had Tommy Berry. I was quite happy, but J-Mac was the one who really, he really killed it last year. What, what What's your approach this year? Well, you got, you just got to look at it each each um, each week. Uh, you, you can click on the jockey, um, and it will have all their races um, added. Oh, this for some reason didn't work, but it worked on the app. Um, it says all the races that they have. Yes. Um, so, so you want you, a lot of the, you want to back the jockeys that have I guess races a, a lot of a lot of races, um, and then look that has the odds next to it as well. So you look at the odds. You know, has a lot of. Um, uh, good price horses, you know, low priced. Yeah. Um, but uh, Justin, who who gets on this show quite often, he um he gets full spreadsheet out and goes through the jockeys. It's it's, it's his thing. And uh, me and me and the other mates kind of just base all our opinions off of you know the top one to three jockeys that he sort of uh, has in his spreadsheet or he's uh, in his papers and sort of pick one of those. I mean, it's a bit of a lottery. You don't really know. You can go through each race, but you kind of just look at the jockey saying, oh, they all these races are there. You know, he's got a full full card. Um, there's a lot of favourites in there. Um, so I've actually gone Jai McNeil um, for this round. The other one who I was tossing up was Damien Lane. Um, they both have a good set of rides. They both have a full card. So um, I'm, I've gone with one of those for this uh, this week. All right, I'm just having a look at Jai McNeil and having a look at uh, – I did notice that in the first few races at Flemington, uh, I just seemed to be picking every single horse that he was riding. So yeah. I guess if you really want to reap the rewards of um, certain horses, um, have a look. I can't. It's not actually saying where he is here, like how yes. many races he has. Yeah, on the, on the app it does. Are you looking at the app on your phone? I'm on the computer. Yeah, for some reason the computer is not showing it, but if you look on the app, actually it does show. It, um, it's funny because I had races. I had a couple of other. Well, they might, or they, or it was on earlier. They might just be sort of fixing it up a bit. Like, oh, yeah. there's stuff in there. So probably check tomorrow is your your better um your better chance. But yeah, I mean, jockeys three points for a win, two for second, one for third. So I guess you always want to be picking a jockey that's going to be racing a lot of races because it's a better chance. And then obviously. Picking the ones that are on, on more, on, you know, favourites um, to get your points because a lot of people just throw in, you know, the jockey that they've heard of, but they might not have a good set of rides that weekend. Yep. So, uh, sorry, James McDonald, he has five races. Um, Karen McAvoy has five races. Jai McNeil. Let's have a look. It's not. Showing Jai McNeil for some reason. Yeah, I don't think it's showing. Um... So they're obviously updating the app. So yeah, they they're, they're, they would be updating it. That's why. So make sure to um, have a look at it on Friday, and make sure to make all your tough decisions Friday or Saturday morning. Because um, if you're setting it aside and doing it all now, you're probably not going to, especially knowing that they could... Yeah, there is still horses to come in. Yeah, and um, like Coolangatta and the Star Chances, so they're going to be horses that probably a lot of people will jump on. So, yeah, just just sort of keep those ones in mind when you're making your stable, and then definitely make your last uh, minute changes either Saturday morning or Friday night. And because you, you know you might be checking, and one of your horses has been scratched, so you know that make that, sure you get rid of it before. That is something you've really got to keep an eye on as well. Um, I think that that's probably enough. Um, I think a lot of people will probably have their head around it after this podcast. Obviously we're not um, experts, but I'm glad I had you on Jake because um, you seem to know a lot about it. And um, I guess we can keep going with a podcast possibly, um, but it really depends on how things play out and things like that. But um, glad to have you on for um, this episode and uh, thanks for coming on. 
No, no worries. It was good to uh, talk something different uh, on here. It was very good, but it feels really <laughs> awkward. It, like talking- it, it is, it is, because we're so used to you know talking about our role players where we're so around it, and now yeah. we're talking about a whole different, whole different ball game. And well, not really. It's not a ball game, is it? It's horse racing, <laughs> but it's, it's all different. So. And it's scored differently. You got to do yep. different tactics, and that's that's why I sort of like playing it. It's something different. You, yep. you look at it differently. It's a bit more like it's different tactics to um, your NRL or your BBL, and I don't know, it keeps me interested. I guess I agree. I like it, and BBL is coming up as well. So I think that's something we'll be more have our head around a bit more. Scoring's a yes. bit easier, and uh, we'll and, have- and well, Mikey, Mikey went so well last year. So came thirty oh, third or something. Yeah, so. he's, 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 he'll be leading it for sure. He's got to be leading our uh, podcast. Could be asking him for advice for sure. hundred uh, percent. At least we'll have him to bounce our ideas off. But uh, for now, uh, thanks for listening and have a good weekend on the punt. Would Game anybody game. like some bound cake? I like some bound cake. Wow.